Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sharon Wood, and I'm Dean of the Cockrell School. So it is my pleasure to welcome you both to the Engineering Education and Research Center and also to the Sustainability um, uh, Symposium. It's the eighth annual Sustainability Symposium. Um, so first off, how many people, this is the first time they're in the EERC? Anyone? Great, well, welcome. We are, we are really proud of this building. Um, probably not as energy efficient as we hoped it would be, but that's the only down, down thing I can say about it. Um, so I hope you just spend some time uh, wandering around the atrium. What we really like about this building is that engineering is on display. So you will get to see our students working in the maker studio and just a um, whole bunch of people from around campus come in and study here. So uh, just before we start, I want to thank the Mitchell Foundation for their support of the sustainability efforts across campus. Um, I have served on the um, President's Steering Committee for Sustainability for the past two years. I actually served as the chair of that. And so uh, what I'd like to do is just review some of the things that I think have been important that have happened over these past few years. Um, I think the first thing was in, in 2016, we have the first uh, sustainability master plan for the University of Texas at Austin. And so Jim is going to be providing details about this later, um, later in this introduction. But this is really an important thing for us because it's setting targets that allow different units from across campus to work toward them. And I think it's helping to put UT on the map in terms of sustainability issues. So we are um, envisioning that that sustainability plan will be updated um, in this next year, in 2020, so having periodic updates. And I um, look forward to how we, we work forward on those goals. I think one of the things that um, also has happened is that we all have a new uh, or an updated campus sustainability policy. Our first policy was written in 2008, so this was long overdue. Um, and so we are, um, I think this is on President Femme's desk right now, so that's, that's a step forward. So over the past couple of years, what are some of the important things? I think one of the things that has really impressed me is how athletics is winning awards for their zero waste efforts. If any of you have, have noticed the football games recently, there used to be just huge piles um, right outside the stadium where all the waste was brought and sorted. And now they have a, a different policy where it's going further out. Um, but they are, are really reducing the amount of waste that's going into landfills and maximizing the amount of um, recycling that's going on. So it's been a tremendous effort within athletics, and we're really proud of that. Um, we had a goal to reduce campus-wide energy use by 20% per square foot by 2020. And we met that goal uh, two years early. So that is also an incredible accomplishment. Um, we're generating interest amongst corporate foundation and individual donors to support sustainability efforts on campus. So for example, BASF is funding the Green Labs project. And uh, this year, they'll be launching some new initiatives within chemical engineering. So, so um, we're also seeing an increased interest in sustainability from students from across the entire campus. Um, many of you know we have a, a new Waller Creek framework plan. Um, Waller Creek, um, many of our buildings back up to it. And it's kind of a, a, a feature that's ignored on campus, yet it runs through the entire campus. So what this framework plan is trying to do is make sure that the university embraces Waller Creek and in, encompasses it in our community. And so I think this is a, um, it's a tremendous, I think it will be a tremendous advantage to the campus, but there are many challenges associated with it. So um, that this framework plan is a really good way to start. And um, what's happening is the individual schools and colleges that are associated with different sections of Waller Creek will be playing major, in, major efforts in this. And then I think finally the, the thing that um, is really engaging campus is that Planet T Texas 2050 has been launched. So this is one of the bridging barriers initiatives through the Vice President for Research. I think there are about 150 faculty members from across campus working on this. And um, it's looking at what's happening to, um, to Texas in terms of climate change, where we have heightened or increasing droughts and also increasing storms. And so how do we manage these different things? So um, I think we've made considerable progress here uh, over the past few years. Obviously, we still have many challenges. Um, as I mentioned, our, our new buildings, which are supposed to be green, may not quite be as energy um, 
efficient as we had hoped, and unfortunately this building is one of those at the, at the moment. And then um, as weather events become more extreme, we also have the issues dealing with, with Waller Creek right here, right, where uh, I think the flooding of that is becoming more, um, more prevalent, and we need to be really worried about what are our buildings that are uh, within the, the floodplain and how to address the, those issues. So um, I just want to thank you for being here. I think there are a lot of exciting things going on across the entire campus related to sustainability. I want to thank uh, Jim for his efforts in leading this because I think he's doing a phenomenal job. And it is also now my pleasure to introduce Jay Hartzell, who is Dean of the Macomb School of Business, who will be um, taking on the leadership role for sustainability for this next year. So welcome, Jay. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks a lot, and it's a pleasure to see you all here today, and, and thanks to Sharon for uh, your leadership of the committee and for hosting us in your amazing building. Uh, my job as dean is to just try to be more like Sharon Wood, and I think if I could be sort of 0.8 Woods, I'd, I'm doing okay. Um, so I, I was a little envious, so I walked through the building, and she has cooler toys than we have in the business school. We have spreadsheets, and she has like machines and things, that, labs and stuff, right? So we'll have to work on that. Um, so I was thinking about, I was talking to one of my colleagues from the business school and they said, you know, why are you here? Um, and I was thinking about reflecting upon what, what's the role of the business school in this campus-wide conversation and, and that we think is quite important. Um, just the last couple of days I was in the upper Midwest talking to companies and was talking to a, a financial services company, my pure finance, and they said their last earnest, uh, meeting with analysts was all about ESG, so environmental, social, and governance issues. Um, and they ended up talking more about that than they did their fundamental financial situation, how the company was performing. Uh, so there's more and more of a conversation around uh, the world and certainly within the country about how can we work together and what are we trying to do. And, you know, as Sharon talked about, it's not just talking about sustainability issues, uh, but it's going to come down to what we actually do. Um, I we all think it's going to be important that we're data driven. Uh, as we approach these issues and also that we're interdisciplinary. So um, I really like the aspect of the committee that we're on and this, these kinds of events today which bring together people from all sides of the university house and, and bring us together uh, from the student side, the faculty side, as well as from the staff side. Um, so you know, we think that this chance to have events like today will shed some light on, on key issues and many of the uh, participants today will share some data um, and what they're doing and their desire to improve our condition in a more permanent and sustainable approach. Um, as our committee looks ahead, so Sharon did a great job of talking about some of the things we've been working on. I wanted to highlight where we think we're heading and give you a chance to, to provide some feedback to one of us um, afterwards. So first, thanks to our fellow committee members. I had Juan Ontiveros is here. Um, thanks to Jim for his leadership of our efforts. Uh, but what we're thinking about as we go forward, and many of you may have, have realized or seen that the President Finviz uh, talked about the Texas Impact Initiative. This question of if we roll the clock forward 10, 20, or 30 years from now, what will we wish that the university had spent more time thinking about and working on as a campus over, this, over the coming years? Um, we think there's a chance here for sustainability to be part of those conversations. Uh, so in the coming months, our plan is to discuss how to convene conversations around uh, these challenges, the challenges that we'll face our campus, our city, and our region over the next 10, 20, or 30 years. Um, so you may ask, how could a sustainab sustainability lens uh, look at those challenges? So some examples. Um, as campus grows, how do we think about expanding our need to generate power? Uh, do we expand in, with our world-renowned natural gas capacity, or do we need to think about different directions? Um, as water consumption and conservation grow in our drought-prone state, how do we model appropriate water use and reuse? And to that extent, also, as, as Sharon mentioned, Waller Creek, how do we think about stormwater management? Um, how could we leverage our food system? Could we uh, do different things with that? It produces over 35,000 meals a day uh, here on campus. Uh, how could that system support more sustainable agriculture and, and, and the food system? Uh, how do we leverage our goals for waste aversion and our purchasing power as a campus? Our campus buys a lot of stuff. And if we think about the way that we coordinate our efforts on that side, um, how can we do things differently uh, to, to think about this as more of a circular economy? How do we address issues around mobility and housing affordability? Uh, those are inextricably linked to sustainability, questions about urban density and transportation costs and, and those things. Um, and we could go on, but you get a sense, I hope, that there are lots of questions where 
Uh, they're important not only to our campus, but to society at large. And we think there's a chance here to use these questions as ways to help our students and help our faculty and staff uh, with these issues. Uh, there's no one right answer, as uh, I'm sure all of us can appreciate. Uh, there are, these often are divisive questions. So I think it's going to be important for all of us to be willing to come together and have uh, open and honest conversations that are data-driven um, and be willing to talk through these issues. Uh, we'd like to focus more on experiential learning opportunities. So how can we take issues around sustainability uh, with the challenges we face and use them as a way to help our students get some experience while they're here and, and part of the campus? And as I mentioned, I also think these issues can be a model for civil discourse, uh, for uh, ways that we can have conversations and debates and, and come to our, uh, these conversations with data and, and reach some conclusions and make some decisions. Uh, this is preliminary work for our committee, uh, as I said. So this is the way we're thinking of, of heading in the years to come. Uh, we hope you'll see more of this. But if you have ideas for what we'd like to do, what you think we could do, uh, feel free to reach out to me, reach out to Jim. Uh, the other dean on the committee now is Dean Paul Goldbart uh, from the College of Natural Sciences. I know he'll be here later today. But, but reach out to one of us and, and see if we can be helpful. Uh, we're looking for ways to engage campus, and I think today's event uh, is a tremendous way to, to, to do that. Um, so with that, I'm going to get out of the way and, and turn it over to Jim Walker. So uh, one of the great pleasures of serving on this committee is that Jim does all the work. Um, and so um, as my, in my lead of following Sharon Wood, I said, Sharon, how is this committee, and, and should I be scared of being chair? And she said, no, Jim does a lot. And so we're really, I think, lucky as a campus to have Jim in this role. Um, and with that, I'm happy to turn it over to, to Jim Walker, our Director of Sustainability. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, thank you, Jay. That was, uh, it's always tough to tend to live up to that. But I'll keep doing the work. We love it here. Uh, so I'm going to talk here about the Sustainability Master Plan update. Um, as uh, Dean Wood mentioned, we first passed this in 2016. It was the first ever um, Sustainability Master Plan as part of the history here. You get built on the 2012 campus master plan where sustainability first kind of got brought into the conversation. We have had a history of looking at uh, sustainability in chunks. So we 2011-12, we did a natural resources conservation plan, which is the first time we really put targets. And setting targets, as Dean Wood mentioned, is, is part of the, the trick of starting to head down this road. What kind of direction are you going where you want to head? But really with the 2016 master plan is when the first time we got uh, the president's office, uh, deans, and a strong committee effort going in, in a sustainability direction. So the plan has six major priority areas, and I'm going to go through each one of these, kind of how we've done over the last, what some of our successes are over the last three years, uh, what we still have to work on, and where some of the challenges are. And I'll also try to touch on what some of the big ideas are. And again, as Dean Hartsville mentioned, um, th there's, there's movement and there's a growing sense of um, critical mass in these directions, which is really fun to be part of. So the plan, as you go, this is all online. Sustainability Master Plan is easy to find uh, online. But each of the, the pages all kind of break out into goals, strategies, and outcomes across several different areas. This is just one example. Uh, and again, this was our thinking even just three years ago, and we've achieved some of these early, and some are still out there. Some we may have to rethink. There's a lot of messier tracking behind all this. Uh, we do track our office, tracks institution level reporting. We rely on a lot of other departments to do finer detail level reporting, but uh, there's a lot of, um, as Jay mentioned, data-driven thinking behind everything we're trying to do. So to get into these six sessions, so in leadership, you know, UT Austin, if we're going to do anything, we want to do it well, and we want to do it uh, at the, near the front of the pack of our peers. And so we, we have a steering committee uh, that is active. That's not always the case, but having an active committee is very important. Uh, the policy, as Dean Wood mentioned, is on the president's desk for update, and we're getting involved in uh, reimagining the sustainability master plan. So if, if you want to get more into some of the data behind all that, we are doing a STARS gold effort where we track at a very fine level and benchmarking tool to all of our peers across the country. Uh, the Living Lab, getting experiential courses is also a, a strong initiative there and doing more with our external networks, including into the community. The big 
thing here, I think, is what uh, Jay was talking about with more and more corporate partners looking at ESG, looking at climate planning, um, where they stand now as your first step in terms of deciding where you want to go. So I think that alignment with Texas Impact is one of the big go forward opportunities within the leadership area. Is how do you how do you really connect the sustainability ideas, bring them off of the margin where they've lived in a lot of universities for a long time, and bring them into the core. Who are we as UT Austin? Who are what's our identity? Within experience and culture, this is where we talk a lot about uh, what your role is on campus. So an undergraduate's experience day to day on campus is very different than a 20 year staff person's uh, time on campus, very different than a faculty member. So we try to get deep into that. Uh, sustainability living learning community started a few years ago, which has been very successful in housing and dining. We done a lot more programming for undergraduates. We also have a new graduate program. We realize that graduate students tend to get siloed into one building or two and they don't network across campus as much. So we have a, some special programming aimed at graduate students to meet each other. Another big one, you'll hear from Cameron Goodman, who's the current president of UT Student Government later today. But for UT Student Government to be appointing a sustainability coordinator every year now to really focus on this is a bellwether. Right, for, for that student population to want to be that clued in is, is very uh, important. You'll also be hearing about some of the more the freshman initiatives, freshman research initiatives, freshman interest groups are increasingly just organically in addressing sustainability. I think the big move forward here, and I would be remiss to not thank President Fenvex for continuing the Green Fund. Uh, that was a student-driven initiative a few years ago. It could have gone away. But the president recognized the student interest in that opportunity to do environmental projects on campus. Uh, and I won't belabor the Green Fund, but it opens up in December, the next round of funding. So go check that out. But the, the big opportunity here going forward is to link our sustainability efforts over the years have become more and more environmental focused. And we tend to forget that the origins of sustainability thinking in the modern frame is about people almost as much as it is about environmental uh, aspects. And so how do we, as a campus, pivot into that a little bit more? Working more with DDCE, who you'll hear more from later today in the afternoon sessions. And how do we pivot more into that, including with the people issues that are just adjacent to campus? Um, that's, the, that's the big move in experience and culture. Opportunity and affordability, we have thought of as the, the systems of campus that everybody interacts with every day. So this is things like food, mobility, livelihood, uh, that the university actually has agency to work on as a system. Uh, so the big idea is here, there's a new flexible work arrangement. We're kind of finally modernizing that. The food system, as was mentioned, is a huge opportunity, to, and you'll hear more about that in a session in a few minutes. But our scale, how do we use our scale to affect some of the systems to improve equity, not only on campus, but more broadly? Uh, well, I want to give a shout out to the Wellness Network and Health Point. They do a great job. Our food system, I think the big opportunity here, and again, uh, Jay mentioned this, is with mobility. So the region is yet again coming to a big mobility conversation over the next year. Uh, housing affordability is even more prominent in that than it has been in the past. You know, UT is not going anywhere. The, the 430 acres is where it is. And so we need to kind of step into how do we imagine mobility and housing affordability together to the benefit of our campus community? Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity in that area. Teaching and research, of course, is the main thrust of what we do here. I want to thank the Mitchell Foundation, add my thanks to the Mitchell Foundation, uh, not only for the symposium, but they've also been funding course development awards uh, for the last six, seven years, and they helped create a lot of courses in a lot of different departments and have reached well over, I think it's probably up towards 20,000 students now uh, that have taken courses that the Mitchell Foundation has helped create sustainability courses. Um, there's a couple new degrees, the BA Sustainability Studies, and there's another degree, I'm going to forget the name of it, Environmental Engineering. Uh, but both of those kind of come along the last couple years and have been receiving numbers in excess of what they imagined, which is fabulous. Of course, getting a Nobel Prize with Dr. John Goodenough recently uh, for lithium-ion battery technology. Another example of what UT Austin has to deliver to the teaching research side. Uh, 
what we've seen over the last few years is a lot of organic growth and sustainability content within the curriculum. We're going to be developing a directory uh, over the next couple months to really showcase and drill down where is sustainability, where are students getting sustainability content, <clears throat> where aren't they, and how do we fill those gaps? And what do we mean by sustainability learning outcomes and content at UT Austin? Different campuses have different identities, different strengths. What are ours and how do we bring those into the, into the curriculum? Um, and, I, and I think that's one, that's one of the big challenges there. For a university as large as we are with as many degrees, how do you get a consistency of a particular learning outcome that young people are increasingly passionate about? Uh, doing that well, uh, doing that at a, at a high quality level is, is part of the trick. Uh, conservation, the, the fifth main area in the sustainability master plan is where our straight up environmental uh, efforts are. So this is the energy, the water uh, systems, the fleet systems. You know, we have three and a half million square feet of green building space, LEED certified space. We're, we're well one of the largest owners, single owners of LEED certified space in the region. But as Dean Wood mentioned, newer buildings don't necessarily mean they're more, they use less energy, right? They may be more energy efficient, uh, plug load by plug load, but all told, they tend to bring more challenges. So trying to bring our thinking into the operations of the building uh, is, is part of a challenge going forward. Juan isn't going to talk about this today, but you'll, you should know this. You know, this campus, the energy system on this campus, which I'm always surprised how few people know about, is a internationally recognized uh, natural gas combined heat and power system, district energy system. Uh, and we should all be proud of that, and we should all know that. Um, the Dell Medical School, which you'll hear more about in a bit, is also the first in Texas, CITES Gold. And CITES is a landscape rating system for how you, what the landscape's doing. Kind of like you think of a green building, this is green landscape, it's a little redundant, but get what I'm going. But we were the first one in Texas. That was, and we helped develop the system with the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center and the U.S. Botanical Council. But it's a great feather in our cap to have that kind of out of the gate. And if you haven't walked through the Dell Medical District yet, landscape, you should do that. Um, we have a tree inventory, our landscape services folks, and I'm happy to see a lot of them here today. I'm really happy to see a lot of staff, students, and faculty in the room braving the cold, even though it's early. Free tacos and coffee are magic. But <laughs> this is part of why we do this event, is to get students, staff, and faculty who are doing cool stuff in their corner of campus together to see and meet each other. And it's really around these environmental issues where that, a lot of that happens. Uh, so one thing that gets a lot of conversation recently is our zero waste goal. So in recycling, because it's, it's kind of the gateway to all the other stuff. It, when we set the zero waste goal, 90% diversion, when we set that back in 2011, 2012, 2020 was a long way away. And it felt easy. So we're, you'll be hearing more about this over the sev next several months as we update the master plan. Uh, we're looking at how that has worked, what hasn't worked, what were the challenges that maybe we underestimated, and how do you really go about that, that, that uh, recycling composting effort? You can't just, and again, I think Jay kind of alluded to this, just because you, it feels like a good idea doesn't absolve you of looking at the data and really figuring out how to do it well and do it right. Um, but we are thinking about it. Uh, and then conservation of, of water and energy intensive spaces, having a new green labs initiative get beefed up is a big deal in that direction. Uh, stormwater management in terms of a, of a challenge going forward, and you'll hear more about that in a few minutes, but that's another big opportunity area for us going forward. And then energy, right? So we have a high performing natural gas power plant, uh, but there's a lot of conversation about uh, carbon emissions, um, and what do you do? When you're looking out, as Texas Impact is, when you're looking out 10, 20, 30 years, you know, do you need to look at what the data is telling you a little differently? And that's, that's a conversation. There's not one right answer. There's not a clear answer. It can get very divisive. But again, as Jay mentioned, how well we model civil discourse in conversations like that is the true mark of a higher education institution, how well we do that part. Uh, then the last area is, is partnerships. And this is where we recognize that sometimes big universities, which are large bureaucracies, can sometimes get stuck in their 
silos, but I'm sorry, not silos, they're cylinders of excellence. <laughs> you can sometimes get stuck in those. And so continuing to focus on what are the internal networks and how do we improve those. So things like the Green Offices Program, Green Labs Program are great examples of that. Uh, the Financial Administrative Services Division is looking at, looking at teamwork as a strategic value and how do you encourage that in a more strategic way. Uh, I want to also recognize Texas Athletics. They got an award from the Green Sports Alliance, which is mostly professional sports teams. But they, they won an award two years in a row from that group, Green Sports Alliance. They changed their rules so that UT could be recognized again in a second year in a row. So it's, it's in a good way. I meant that in a good way. So and that's awesome. BASF deserves a shout out for being kind of a, a first in corporation to want to invest in sustainability on this campus. And then we, we do have linkages to the city of Austin. Uh, CAP Metro is here in the room, uh, SECO is in the room, so we do have linkages out to other agencies in the region, recognizing that UT Austin is a major anchor in this community and where our priorities go, how well they align matters. And so that's what's kind of fun to think about going forward as we update the sustainability master plan. And I'm going to stop there. We do have a few minutes ahead of our 9.30 session, but I think if we start a little early, I think that's probably okay. But if you want to Oh, sure. Questions? Uh, I think Jay mentioned Lourdes. Buenos dias. So you mentioned that um, one challenge was getting units to develop their own sustainability plans. Um, what do you envision those to be? Is it a, a new way of doing what they're already doing? Or are you like, what, what, would, you, what would be your ideal? Uh, operationalization of those sustainability, sustainability plans by departments or units? So we, so one of the ways that we, so the sustainability match plans at the institution, but we also recognize that every unit, you have academic units, operations units, administrative units, their business functions, what their services are, are different, right? So what, what improvement means is different. So we do not currently have like a formal structure for what a unit level sustainability plan is. There are some examples of that out across the country. Our preference is to come and meet with a department, a la what the Green Offices team does or Green Labs and go, okay, well, what do you do? And where are the opportunities for change? And a lot of sustainability is just that, right? It's taking a little bit of a critical look at what do we do and how could we improve the environmental performance, maybe improve the social benefits, minimize the environmental impacts, it's just a little bit of purposeful thinking. Sometimes it costs a little bit of money. Sometimes it saves money. Sometimes it takes a little bit of will just to change. But we have found that that's unit by unit. So we haven't found great success in dictating down a single way to do it other than a conversation. And again, this is kind of where the civil discourse thing comes from. Is we're not telling anybody what to do. We're just encouraging them to think about what they are doing. 